Uh, Kathy Carriage, uh, 771 West I Street, uh, Benicia resident for 27 years. Um, I'm also a member of the Good Neighbor Steering Committee. And um, we held a public forum on Tuesday. I have a stack of questions that were presented at that forum, which I would like to present uh, to the commission. I believe these were also dropped off at City Hall today. Um, may I? They were very sophisticated questions, and I think they deserve also uh, to be answered. Uh, I also did email additional comments in today, but I was not on the list of names that you read out, and I do want to make sure that those are also in, in the uh, entered into the record. Uh, for people in the audience, we have two reports that were submitted that were not part of the public comment that I think it's very vitally important that people read. Uh, that is the report by Dr. Phyllis Fox and the Goodman report, which backs up uh, many of the statements that NRDC just made. The fact that you have gotten such a huge volume of questions and there's so much community concern about this project uh, I think means that this project needs an environmental impact report. Only by looking at the most narrow definition of the project would you say there is no impact. This project could have a huge impact on the safety of Benicia, on its air quality, and our, on our exposure to toxic chemicals. I hope that you take the time to thoroughly read these reports and study them. Uh, and I think you'll show, they'll show that we do need an ERI for this uh, project. I have a multitude of concerns and questions about the project. In light of the recent train disaster in Canada, I want to have much more information about how these trains will be staffed, what kind of rail cards are used, are they the safest possible? What kind of fail-safe plans will be in effect to prevent a runaway train? What are the safety plans in effect now, not the ones that will be developed at some point in the future? What would happen if there is a derailment and explosion in the industrial park near an oil tank? What would happen if the, in the marsh if there is a derailment? Tar sands are different than regular oil. They're still doing a cleanup on the Kalamazoo River that's approaching three years after a pipeline burst carrying tar sands. The cost is approaching $1 billion, and it's still not cleaned up. Oil still surfaces every time there's a rainstorm. Who will pay for the cleanup if there's a derailment, if there's an accident? And there have been other rail accidents in the Sassoon Marsh. Our general plan puts sustainability first. It specifically states on page 22, what is done at the project or local level can affect all levels of the environment, including the local community, neighboring regions, the country, and the world. This means to me that we must take a large view of this project. If tar sands are imported, doesn't that directly go against providing for a more sustainable future? There are tremendous greenhouse gas emissions from the tar sands. We live in a community susceptible to sea level rise and drought. Are we slitting our own throats if these are brought in? Can a mitigation of this project be no diluted bitumen, no tar sands allowed? How can we guarantee that for the next 50 years? The general plan takes a long-term economic view. If Valero refines tire sands with its higher pollution, stronger odors, greater risk of accidents, will we have new industries and new businesses wanting to relocate in the industrial park? How will it affect the uh, current uh, businesses there? Right now, the refinery doesn't have a lot of odors. But if we start having a big smell every time they're refining, that could have a potential de detrimental impact on our industrial park. And the general plan means that you have to consider that. What will the consequences be over the next 10 years, the next 30 years, the next 50 years? How does the potential importation of tar sands crude impact AB 32 and the low carbon fuel standards? How can we strive for lower emissions if we encourage the development of the dirtiest fuels? Will these meet the AB 32 standards? If tar sands are imported, how will we know? What will happen when the VIP is fully implemented? Will the crude mix change? Will Valero tell us if there are changes in its sources after the project is approved? Would we have a say in it at that time? Would it be too late to then protect the community of the awful consequences of refining tar sands crudes? Would an ERI have to be then done now, or does it need to be done now? CEQA requires that there be an evaluation of all foreseeable cumulative contributions to negative impacts. That was not done here. 
we need an ERI for this re for this project. Your time's up if you want to. Do you want me to continue? No, no, I don't want you to continue. <laughs> I'd be happy to. <laughs> Thank you. Thank